reference once again. It's your tutor, Mr. Sensa from Sensa Academy School of Tuitions. And particularly for today, I want to highlight how best we can be able to face questions in biology paper 2, especially during the theory exam. And how best we are going to answer those questions. When we talk about biology paper 2, categorically we are talking about that is section A and section B. When we talk about section A, we are going to have the questions which are going to be diagrammatical based. But when we talk about section B, we are going to talk about essay questions, like what's being written in this point. So in this case, we are going to focus on section B. My main intention is to share with you on how best we can answer some of the essay questions and the tips that an examiner would want and would look out for provided to where to be allocated before the marks on a particular question. Follow closely as we begin. So these are just some of the examples that can help us understand how this an essay in biology can ever be written. So in this case, we have question letter A. Question letter A is saying, describe the role of the pancreas in blood sugar regulation. Describe the role of the pancreas in blood sugar regulation. When we talk about regulation in biology, that word biologically refers to maintenance. But when we talk about blood sugar, we are referring basically to glucose. Now, we are going to find that there is the pancreas that is involved. Before starting to attempt the question, it's best advisable that we look for the number of marks that are allocated in order for us to know how much of the effort we are going to put in under the expectation of the examiner. In this case, we have five marks. Five marks here, we are expected to put up a paragraph type of answering where like, we are going to put everything related to the pancreas involved in the maintenance of sugar levels in the world. So let's begin. So when we talk about blood sugar regulation, that comes from the biological topic called homeostasis. Homeostasis is the maintenance of a constant internal environment. Under homeostasis, there are many things that are being regulated. The first important thing we can talk about, we can talk about the maintenance of the levels of water. When water is being maintained at a needed level required by the body cells, that is called osmoregulation. Now, when we talk about the maintenance of glucose, which is also biologically known as blood sugar, this is called blood sugar regulation. Then, we can also talk about the maintenance of temperature or heat in the body, and this is called thermoregulation. Now, our only focus is to talk about osmoregulation as well as glucose or blood sugar regulation. But as usual, homeostasis is the maintenance of a constant internal environment. And under homeostasis, we are going to be having the work of what we can call hormones. When we say hormones, and hormone is a chemical substance produced by ductless glands transported by blood to the targeted organs. Now, let's see how best we are going to do this. So describe the role of the pancreas in blood sugar regulation. The pancreas is a gland. When we talk about the pancreas, it is a gland that can be able to secrete, that is, hormones and enzymes at the same time. But the pancreas has got two important types of cells. We can have what we can call the beta cells. We can also have what we can call the alpha cells. When we talk about the beta cells, they can be abbreviated as the B cells. When we talk about the alpha cells, they can be abbreviated as the A cells. Now, these beta cells and alpha cells are found in a certain tissue called isolates of the labyrinth. Now, from the beta cells, we are going to have the secretion of an hormone called insulin. And then, from the alpha cells, we are going to have the secretion of an hormone called glucagon. Now, these hormones are going to work perfectly on the process of blood sugar so that it can be regulated with the normal levels because its content depends on how best it can be able to lead to diabetes like us. So the insulin hormone is going to act. This is going to act on excess glucose. 
and it is going to convert it into a storage form called glycogen. Now, the glucagon hormone is now going to work on stored glycogen, converting it, that is, back into active and soluble glucose. Then, we are going to put up whatsoever we've said now in a statement form, which can be a brief, summarized, but most important biological parameter. So, let's see what's going to follow. So, we're going to find out the first thing, what would be important here is that we can briefly try to define blood sugar regulation. So, we can say blood sugar regulation is the maintenance is the maintenance of glucose levels in the body with the aid of the pancreas. So we can briefly title our paragraph in that way. Blood sugar regulation is the maintenance of glucose levels in the body with the aid of the pancreas. When I say aid, I mean pill. So I'm going to find out the pancreas, the pancreas, then we put the comma, the pancreas will secrete an hormone called insulin from the beta cells which converts excess glucose to glycogen. When sugar levels are high. So this is the first part of it. Blood sugar regulation is the maintenance of glucose levels in the body with the aid of the pancreas. The pancreas will secrete a hormone called insulin from the beta cells, but this insulin will convert excess glucose to glycogen when sugar levels are then we can say when sugar levels are low, the alpha cells, the alpha cells will secrete glucagon hormone, which converts stored glycogen back to sodium glucose. So this is how best we can answer this test. Blood sugar regulation is the maintenance of glucose levels in the body with the aid of the pancreas. Then we bring to limelight the importance of the pancreas in this maintenance. The pancreas will secrete a hormone called insulin. Insulin is secreted from the beta cells. Now, that insulin is going to convert excess glucose into glycogen. The main reason why glucose, which is in excess, is converted into glycogen is because glucose is a reactive Hence, it can interfere in some metabolic reactions in the body. But, on contrary, we are going to find that when sugar levels are low, the alpha cells, the alpha cells are responsible for producing or secreting, that is, a hormone called glucagon hormone. This hormone will convert stored glycogen back to solute active glucose, which the body can use during the process of respiration, leading to the production of NH. Now, we are going to find that the conversion of glycogen back to glucose is
best activated by a hormone called adrenaline. When you talk about adrenaline, that is a hormone coated from the adrenal glands, which are located in, below the rib cage or above the kidneys. Now, we're going to find that what was more important under this discussion. Describe the role of the pancreas in blood sugar regulation. First, importantly, try to briefly dive your paragraph as in trying to relate to how this question was phrased. The question was phrased on the pancreas involved in blood sugar regulation. The best thing, let's try our level best to briefly talk about blood sugar. Blood sugar, we're talking about glucose. So this is the regulation and maintenance of glucose levels in the body. And under blood sugar, the involved organ that has been mentioned in this case is the pancreas. How about it? The pancreas will secrete. I didn't use the word produce because secrete is more recommendable because it is biological. The pancreas will secrete a hormone called insulin from the beta cells, which converts excess glucose to glycogen. Glycogen is a storage form of glucose and it is that energy a person can use while sleeping or while not doing any activity or even if there are low levels of that is glucose levels in the body, the body can depend on glycogen. And then, when sugar levels are low, the opposite is true, whereas the outer cells will secrete glucagon hormone which converts stored glycogen back to sodium glucose. So, this is how best we can answer this particular diagram. Yes, let's go to B. So, on B, we have explain the process of phosphoregulation. In short, if we were uh, to phrase this question in personal language, it says explain how phosphoregulation happens and what's involved under its process. So, explain the process of osmoregulation. When we say osmo, it comes from the word osmosis. Osmosis is the movement of water molecules from a region of higher water concentration to a region of lower water concentration across a partial and tenable membrane. But now, when you talk about regulation, that simply refers to the word maintenance. Explain the process of osmoregulation. First, importantly, let's define osmoregulation, then we can talk about how it happens and how the regulation itself is going to occur. So I'm going to say osmoregulation is the maintenance of levels of water in the body of an organism. Osmoregulation is the maintenance of levels of water or of water levels in the body of any living organism. Osmoregulation is dependent on the brain. Now, we are going to find that when there are uh, low water levels in the body, the brain through the pituitary gland is going to sense what is in the body as a condition. It's going to send the command to a certain organ of the brain or part of the brain, which is called the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus will then be able to secrete an hormone called antidiuretic hormone. It is that hormone that can convert all the cells of the kidney to reabsorb water before it forms urine. Now we're going to explain it in a biological way. So we're going to say when there are low water levels in the body, the hypothalamus or hypothalamus, the hypothalamus in the brain will secrete who secretes anti-diuretic hormone which forces and 
to the back of the bits. The cells of the kidney to reabsorb more water. Osmoregulation is the maintenance of levels of water in the body of an organism. Then what could be most important to talk about osmoregulation is the maintenance when water levels are a bit low in the body. And why so? This is because when low water levels are experienced in the body, they are, there can be a situation where a person can be dehydrated and as such, we are going to find that the person can never be active. And with that in mind, we are going to find that water is always, that is a sodium liquid that can be able to be a universal solvent. So osmoregulation regulation is the maintenance of the levels of water in the body. But its process to occur efficiently really depends on the action of the brain. The part of the brain responsible to control the regulation under which osmoregulation regulation should occur is the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is just a master gland that doesn't perform anything except to command what should be able to work on something so that the body can go under the normal balance. Now, we're going to find that the pituitary gland will force, that is, the hypothalamus in the brain to secrete anti-direct hormone. But this anti-direct hormone will be forced or this anti-direct hormone is just going to force and activate the cells of the kidney to reabsorb more water. And when there are higher water levels in the body, a person can experience a lot of urine in the bladder or a person can be able to sweat so as to get rid of the water. And this is how best I wanted to share our information with you. On our best, we can be able to answer some biological essay questions from section B, as there are a bit stressy, especially when a person has done well in that is maybe in section A, but considering the performance in section B can be a bit poor. I hope you are going to find this video more beneficial. Then you can click on the number that's appearing on the screen right now to reach us on WhatsApp in case you would want to refer us some of the tissues or you would want to yourself. Then kindly download the video before you watch so as to save bundles. Then you can watch it at any time that you want. But don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. In the meantime, till next time, it's a good day.